In this video, I'll be giving a quick overview of the purchases and payable setup in Business Central. To begin, as always, I will search in my search feature in the top right, and I'll look for purchases and payables. If you're having trouble finding this, it's worth noting that the AND symbol is used and not the letters. Firstly, we've got discount posting. Firstly, we'll look at our general tab and some of the options we've got here. Firstly, we've got discount posting. This defines how discounts are applied to purchase documents. If we select no discounts, discounts are not posted separately, but are instead are subtracted from the purchase amount before posting. If we select invoice discounts, the invoice discount and invoice amount are posted simultaneously based on the purchase invoice discount field in the general posting setup. And it's the same with the next option, line discounts, except now it's based on the purchase line discount account field in the general posting setup. If we select all discounts, the invoice and line discount and the invoice amount are posted simultaneously based on both the purchase invoice discount account and the purchase line discount account. Again, these are in the general posting setup. Next, we can select whether we want to create a receipt on invoice. This will create posted receipt documents when we post our purchase invoices. If this is not selected, only purchase invoices are created. If we want to use item charges, it's important that we have this selected. Next, we've got invoice rounding. This is specified in our invoice rounding precision field in the general ledger setup. Our toggle specifies if they are rounded or not for purchase invoices. Next, we've got our external document number mandatory. If this is selected, then we cannot post purchase orders or invoices without a vendor or vendor credit memo number filled in in our document. Next, we have our exact cost reversing mandatory. As you can see below, this specifies that return transaction cannot be posted unless the apply to entry item field on the purchase order line specifies an entry. Next, we have our check prepayment when posting. This will give us an error if there are any unpaid prepayments assigned to the purchase order or invoice. Next, we have ignore updated, in, ignore updated addresses. This specifies whether changes to addresses made on purchase documents are then copied to our vendor card. As you can see below, by default, changes are copied to the vendor card. And next, an important field is our default posting date. This specifies how we use the posting date field on our purchase documents. We've only got two options here. If we select work date, we will receive a current work date on any newly created purchase documents. And if we select a no date, we will just get an empty field. Lastly, we've got default quantity to receive. When we enter into a document, if we have remainder set, our quantity to receive column will be set to the remainder of items or services that we are still to receive. If it's selected as blank, then we will have a blank field. That covers our important options in our general tab. You might notice there are some others that we didn't talk about, but these are covered in other videos. Next, we have our number series tab. Here we can define all of our number series for our different documents. And next, we have our background posting. If we have job queues set up, we can enable these. Next, we have archiving. By default, any purchase orders or quotes will be deleted once they are processed into an invoice and posted. Here we can change that and we can have posted documents stored in an archive. Lastly, we have default accounts where we can specify what accounts we would like to use for non-item lines for our debit and credit. This has just been a quick overview of the setup. When you hover over each of the descriptions, these fields, you can select learn more. This provides a more in-depth look at what each field does.